Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is uh, John McDougall. I'm an internist. I've been uh, in the business of medicine since 1968, so about 44 years. Uh, <clears throat> the, the joke is, is that uh, a doctor and a secretary know the same about nutrition unless she happens to be on a diet, and then she knows more. Uh, my education in, in medical school began uh, over 40 years ago, and I got basically one class on nutrition, and that was to decide between different types of formulas. My son just graduated uh, from medical school two years ago, and he can't remember a course on nutrition. But you're going to hear from other interested parties that uh, we don't need to have a law that mandates that doctors get an education on something basic like nutrition because, you know, doctors already take care of this. Well, that's plain and simple not true. Um, I, I teach. I'm, I'm a, a professor in a medical school. And I teach nutrition, and, and the students are eager to learn about it. And I don't find any of them telling me about courses they've taken in nutrition. Yet, the majority of diseases in this country are dietary related, and that goes without any question. Uh, Two-thirds of the people are overweight. They predict that 30% of people will have type 2 diabetes soon. Uh, heart disease uh, is a $100 billion a year business just for the surgery. And without question, these are dietary diseases, yet physicians who have been trained for seven plus years know virtually nothing about human nutrition and what to prescribe patients. And not only is this a, a travesty for the patient, it's insulting to the doctor not to be able to deliver this kind of a powerful tool for their patients to teach them about the cause of dietary diseases and based on the scientific literature, if you correct what's making people sick, they get well. So as doctors, we're missing a real opportunity and as far as a, as far as a business is concerned, a government's concerned, uh, we're talking about 16% uh, of the gross national product of this country is due to, to, uh, to disease. And three quarters of that is due to chronic disease. And I'm here to tell you based on my experience, more than 40 years, that most of that disease is due to the rich Western diet that we eat. And doctors know vir virtually nothing about it. And you know this should have been fixed 40 years ago when I was a medical student. It should have been fixed two years ago when my son graduated from medical school. And it's not gonna be fixed unless somebody does something about it. And that is uh, to mandate uh, basic education on human nutrition. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee for allowing me the opportunity to testify in support of SB 380. My name is Don Forrester. I'm a board certified family medicine physician. I'm also a certified physician executive and trained patient safety officer out of Intermountain Healthcare. I practiced medicine with Permanente Medical Group for over 30 years. I retired in November of 2008. In the last several years of my practice applying scientifically based nutritional principles, I was able to cure and reverse diabetes. And it's a more rewarding way to practice. My colleagues asked me to start giving them talks on this uh, material, so I started giving talks to lay groups and, and, and physicians. And both groups have always been very appreciative and supportive of the information. The power of this proper nutritional approach was driven home to me just last week, um, participating in a Meals for Health program, which is a collaboration with the Sacramento Food Bank and EarthSave and, and the McDougall Clinic. 21 participants basically went on a better nutritional approach to their health. And I checked them just last week after 12 days, and the average weight loss was 11 pounds. Their cholesterol was down 30 points. Their fasting blood sugars were down about 10 points over 5. Uh, Many of them were off medications they were taking for high blood pressure. Last week when I gave a talk to the Kaiser Permanente faci facilities in this, re in this area, all three hospitals and 13 clinics, uh, I went over the 2006 American Heart Association data, which showed that in, in 2006 we did 1.5 million angioplasties in this country at $50,000 a pop with a 1% mortality rate, we did 500,000 bypass surgeries with a 2 to 3% mortality rate at $100,000 a clip. So we spent in this country $100 billion doing those procedures while we killed 30,000 people. 90% of those, the literature supports that 90% of those could have been adequately treated with a nutritional approach with medication, and that as a trained patient safety officer, I can tell you of the 10% that probably might need the procedure to help them out with properly designed studies uh, and uh, uh, good shared decision making by the patients, they probably avoid a good majority of those. So lay people often ask me why, 
when I talk to them why their doctors don't know this material. And I point out that it's difficult for physicians to keep current when over 10,000 articles hit the National Library of Medicine every week, and annually over 5,000 articles are published on human nutrition alone. So the doctors are always very appreciative when they get the information. It's just hard for them to get a, get a hold of it. So I think in summary, the, the science shows that proper nutrition approaches work for patients and their family. It works certainly best when it's applied early. And the interesting thing as a practicing clinician is where I'd have one or two pills for diabetes, if I improve somebody's diabetes, it also improved their cholesterol as well as their uh, as well as their blood pressure. So one intervention can affect a wide range of things. So when you're treating coronary artery disease, for instance, you're actually improving their cholesterol, num their, their fasting sugar numbers, as well as their blood pressure. So I think uh, SB 380 is an important first step in improving patient care and the health of our citizens. But thank you very much for your attention and the time. Thank you. I'm uh, Dr. Ron Hattis, representing